Hey guys, so I am very excited for today's video because I'm going to be sharing my perfume collection with you. I have just recently gotten very into fragrance. I really have never been that into fragrance in the past, but suddenly I am just obsessed with it. I feel like I'm almost as into fragrance lately as I am makeup, and that's saying a lot because, I mean, my whole channel is about makeup. So anyway, I am excited to share my collection with you today. I have to say, I have accumulated quite a few. I think I counted 15 here, which is a lot for someone who is very new to fragrance. I feel like I've accumulated a lot very quickly. Now, a lot of these were sent in PR, but a lot of them I did also purchase with my own money. So um, yeah, got a mix of all kinds of different brands. We've got some good chemistry, Skylar, Pinrose, Seven Virtues. All of these brands are cruelty-free as well. I know a lot of people struggle to find cruelty-free perfumes, but there are a lot of great brands out there. All these brands are on the Logical Harmony cruelty-free list and or are Leaping Bunny certified. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the more affordable ones, and then we'll kind of work our way up to the pricier ones. So I guess that means I will start with Good Chemistry. I have four of these. These I did purchase all myself um, a few months ago. So Good Chemistry is definitely one of the more affordably priced brands. They used to be sold in Target. I think some Targets still carry them, although mine stopped carrying them, which is kind of a bummer, but I just purchased all of these straight from their website. Their regular size perfumes are $24.99, their um, rollerball perfumes are $12.99, and then their body sprays are $9.99. Let's start with this one. This one is Queen Bee, and they describe this as vibrant and bold with a touch of sass. I'm gonna be honest, the main reason I bought this is because my cat's name is Bee, and anytime something has the word Bee in it, I am like 10 times more likely to purchase it. So the scent is also really nice. I don't have any like actual perfume smelling card thingies, but I just went ahead and cut little pieces of brown paper that I had in my recycle bin. I <laughs> figured I would use them for this purpose, because why not? Hopefully this will work. But Queen Bee, they say, has notes of blackcurrant, peony, and amber. And I think this is meant to be kind of like a fruity floral scent. Now, I actually bought all of these good chemistry perfumes blindly, like I had never smelled them before. This one is really nice though. It's probably not one that I would have purchased had I like smelled it beforehand, but it is definitely fresh, crisp, fruity, a little bit floral, but really not much floral coming through here. I have to say, I don't really smell any blackcurrant, peony, or amber. I don't know what I'm smelling, but I feel like I definitely wouldn't have like named any of those notes if you had just given this to me and told me to describe what I smell. I feel like this is a really good like spring and summer scent. It's, it's definitely very juicy and fresh, but it's not like too in your face sweet. Okay, the next good chemistry perfume I have is Vanilla Orchid. This I have to say, out of all the perfumes I have, both high-end and more affordable, this is probably the most beautiful packaging that I own, or at least top three for sure. And they say it's a delicious scent that oscillates between floral and gourmand, grounded by a touch of earthiness. Notes of Tahitian vanilla, orange blossom, and tonka bean. So this one is interesting because I don't smell any vanilla here, and I was definitely expecting this to be like a primarily vanilla scent, and I do really like vanilla, but this is so floral to me. It's a little bit more floral than I would typically go for. Honestly, I'm not in love with this scent. It's not bad, like I, I think it's a pretty scent, but once again, it's probably not one that I would have picked out for myself. I do feel like the lasting power on these good chemistry perfumes is actually pretty good. Like I'm pretty impressed by how well they last especially for the price. I would say you may find yourself wanting to like reapply maybe halfway through the day, maybe. But I mean, I feel like they're, they're pretty strong even on their own, even just applying once. But I do wish there were more vanilla to this one. Although I feel like vanilla and floral don't necessarily mesh that well together. And I think the floral probably just overpowers the vanilla, if I had to guess, I don't know. But either way, I like having this just for the beautiful packaging. And I do think when I'm in the mood for this kind of scent, I will wear it. All right, and then the third good chemistry perfume I have, this is my favorite of all of them. This is Solar Jasmine. This is such a beautiful scent. This is, for, for me, this is a very summery scent. It's very warm. So this says fruity citrus and creamy woods, notes of pineapple, peach blossom, and sandalwood. It's funny, anytime, anytime I read the notes of these good chemistry perfumes, I'm like, that's interesting because I didn't smell that at all. I feel like you can't just go off of what the notes say mm -hmm. online. You kind of have to smell them for yourself. But I love this scent. It's definitely a little bit floral, but not it, that's not 
all it is. I think for me, I like floral when it's balanced out by other notes. And this is a very well balanced scent for me. It's floral, but at the same time, it's warm and kind of creamy too. For me, this is a good summer scent. I don't know what it is about it that just I associate with summer, probably because I bought this in the summer and I was wearing it a lot this summer, that now it'll forever just be a summer scent for me, but I, I just think that's really beautiful. But if you don't normally like jasmine, don't be thrown off by the name solar jasmine because I don't really get that much jasmine from this. And I find it interesting that they don't even list jasmine as one of the notes. They only list three notes for all of these, and this one says pineapple, peach blossom, and sandalwood. I don't really get much of that. I Actually, I do get a little bit of peach. So I do have one good chemistry body spray, and I have to say I kind of wish I hadn't bought this just because I do really like the scent. But the body spray, it's it's such a weak scent. I mean, it truly is a body spray. You're not gonna get a ton of like lasting scent from this. It's more of just like a freshening up kind of scent. And it's just so weak that I almost feel like there's no point in even applying it. Um, but this is the scent Royal Rebel. Now, I do like the scent of this a lot and I wish I'd bought just the regular perfume of it because I think I would really like it a lot more if I had like the actual perfume. So like I said, their body sprays retail for $9.99. And you know, if you like body sprays, you like a very mild, subtle scent, this might be a good kind of thing to throw in like your gym bag or something. But this says it has notes of pink pepper, golden amber, and musk, which are all notes that do appeal to me. Very warm, a little bit spicy. This, if I hugged someone who was wearing this scent, I would feel instantly like at ease, you know? I would be just like, ah, oh, this just smells like a very calming person to be around, you know? It just smells like somebody who like knows themselves and is very at ease with themselves. <laughs> That's what it smells like to me. I like it, but I just think I, the body spray is just basically useless to me because I want to be able to smell myself throughout the day. I want to be able to catch whiffs of whatever scent I'm wearing. And with that body spray, you're not going to get that. So those are all my good chemistry perfumes. Let's go ahead and chat about the one Sol de Janeiro scent that I have while we're on the topic of body sprays because this is also a body spray. However, this one is a lot stronger than the good chemistry one. And for a body spray, I'm very happy with both the strength of the scent and the lasting power. So I would say if you've been wanting to try this scent, the body spray is not a bad option because it is much more affordable than the perfume version, which I have not tried. But this is the um, Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Crush Cheirosa 62. So this is the scent of the famous Boom Boom Cream that I'm sure you've all heard of. But top notes are pistachio and almond. Mid notes are heliotrope and jasmine petals. And the dry down is vanilla, sal salted caramel, and sandalwood. I think it's beautiful. It's very warm. It's definitely a gourmand scent. Yeah, I definitely smell the pistachio, almond, vanilla, salted caramel, even a little bit of sandalwood. This is really nice. I have found I really do like gourmand scents. Not all of them, like it has to have some complexity to it. It can't just be a straight up like vanilla cupcake or something, but this has enough complexity to it that it, it smells a little bit sophisticated. It really does stick around. You can see I've used a lot of this already. I do feel like for a body spray, this does last pretty well. Probably not as well as the perfume. I think eventually, because I like the scent so much, I probably will get the perfume version. Oh, and by the way, this body mist from Sol de Janeiro is $20. They do have a bigger size for $35, but I feel like $20 for a, a pretty large amount that actually has good like staying power is I feel like that's a pretty good deal. All right, so I think the next brand up the like price ladder is going to be Pinrose. Now these are a little bit more of a luxury price. Okay, wait a minute. Actually, it looks like they did just raise the price of Pinrose perfumes. On the website, they are now retailing for $90. Oh my goodness, that is that is not cheap. However, on Ulta, it looks like they are still 77, which is what they were originally. And I did see, they did announce recently that they were upping the price. And so they were like, now's the time to get it for the original price before we up the price. They weren't kidding, $90. Dang, I was expecting them to maybe raise it to like 85. So I have the scent Mystical Misfit. This is, I think, in the limited edition packaging. I bought this actually a couple weeks ago off of Anthropology. They had it on sale for $49.95, so $50, which was such a good deal. <laughs> um, like I think even with the original price, that was like 35% off. So I jumped on it 
And I had actually just prior to that bought a sampler set from Pinrose. And out of all of them, this was my favorite. So when I saw that it was on sale, I immediately got it because that was such a good deal. When I smell this, I just can't help but smile. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. So Fragrance Family, they say, is fruity, floral. Top notes are red currant, peach, prune, and raspberry. Heart is pink rose, jasmine, sambac, and geranium bourbon. Dry down is patchouli, vanilla, and musk. When I first smelled this, like when I had the sample vial, I immediately was like, oh, I love that. Sometimes, you know, when you smell a fragrance for the first time, you're like, hmm, what do I think of this? Hmm. No, immediately I knew I loved it. And I also immediately thought that this smells like Christmas to me and not in a sense of like, oh, everyone would smell this and immediately think of Christmas. It's not like it smells like a Christmas candle and there's nothing even particularly Christmassy about it. But I think there's something about like the currant and raspberry, like, I don't know, it kind of smells like berries and cream or even maybe like a cranberry thing that I associate with the holidays. And somehow the fruitiness of this kind of balances out the patchouli to almost make it smell a little bit like an evergreen tree, like a Christmas tree sort of thing. It just smells like happy, joyous times, you know, like Christmas time. And I don't know what it is. And I don't want that to throw you off if you're like, oh, what do you mean it smells like like a Christmas candle or something? No. There's nothing even that Christmassy about this like on paper, but something in me that's just like makes me think of Christmas time and it just makes me smile. It makes me really happy. Yeah, I don't know. I I just I love it. I love this. Even though it's sweet and tart, it's also it's got it's got a warmth to it. I'm so glad I bought the full size. Now, there are two other Pinrose perfumes that I have on my wish list that I also love. I don't think I love them quite as much as Mystical Misfit, but they are just like one tiny step down and I feel like they're both kind of tied for me as far as how much I like them, but they are Pillow Talk Poet and Merrymaker. Mmm, I love both of those. Pillow Talk Poet, I'm not going to spend too much time on these because I don't have the full size and I really just wanted to focus on the ones that I actually have in my collection today, but Pillow Talk Poet, I've heard it described as like a sexy laundry sort of scent clean, crisp, a little bit powdery, which I normally wouldn't like something that I would describe that way, but this is beautiful. And then Merrymaker, it's a nice like kind of going out scent or a nice date night scent. It just smells very put together and pretty. Like if I smelled someone wearing either one of these, I'd be like, that is a pretty person. <laughs> like whoever is wearing that scent, I can like smell their beauty. I don't know. I just, I love them both. Pinrose, I feel like of all the brands that I've tried, I think I like Pinrose the best because I, I mean, I, I didn't like all of the Pinrose scents that I smelled in the sampler set, but there's something about Pinrose. I feel like it's really well suited to like my age group. I'm 26, about to turn 27. I, I feel like their scents are really well suited to like somebody in their like, I don't know, mid twenties to mid thirties, like that age range, because they do have complexity to them, but at the same time, they're youthful. I mean, obviously anybody of any age group can wear any perfume that they want, but I don't know. I just feel the most drawn to Pinrose. I feel like they're very well-balanced scents, and I just feel like they suit me really well. So, and like I said, I didn't even really like all of the Pinrose scents that I smelled, but the three that I like, I love. Like, I would be happy with like just those. Um, by the way, at the end of this video, I will share my top three. I'm not sure what they are yet, but not including any of the samples. I do have quite a collection of little sample vials as well. That is Pinrose. I'm a little sad that they raised their price so much. Like $90 just seems a little, a little extreme, but anyway. All right, the next brand I have is Skylar. Now these have all been sent to me. I have not purchased any of these myself, but I do have three of the scents in their old packaging and then earlier this year they did rebrand and um, I have also three scents in their new packaging. So let's talk about the old ones first. So of the three I have in their old packaging, I think only one of these is still being made in the new packaging and that is Sun Shower. And then the other two I have are Arrow and Coral. I won't spend too much time on those since you can't get them anymore, but Sun Shower is another one that I don't think I would have ever chosen this scent for myself, but I like it. So back when they were in this packaging, I think they were around $75. Now they are selling them for $85, so they are not cheap. And I'm not sure if the scent 
is any different now that it's been repackaged. I'm assuming it's pretty much the same. Maybe it's like a little bit different, but this one, Sun Shower, says Italian bergamot, lemon leaves, and jasmine tea are the top notes. Middle notes are ginger flower, meadow greens, and lily. And base notes are cedarwood, cypress, and guayac wood. This one to me smells very fresh, clean, and citrusy. Definitely picking up on the lemon leaves of this. I, I do, yeah, there is a little bit of a floralness to this too. The jasmine tea I do smell. And then I feel like the cedar wood kind of gives it this like tartness to it that I do like. I do tend to like citrusy fragrances with cedar or cedar wood as a base note. I think I've learned that. And yeah, I really like this. This is very much a summertime scent for me. Haven't really been reaching for it a whole lot lately just because I'm really into like warm, fally scents. Um, but I do think this is a pretty scent. If you like citrusy, clean scents, I think you would really like this. I do feel like the lasting power on all three of these in the old packaging is pretty good. So Arrow, this one, like I said, is no longer sold, but this is warm, spicy, and seductive. Notes of midnight jasmine, warm patchouli, and vanilla. And you know, I used to think I didn't like patchouli, but honestly, I don't think I like straight patchouli, but when it's part of a very well-balanced fragrance with other notes, I tend to really like it. So this is a nice one, definitely warm, spicy, seductive. I agree with that description. This was what I was wearing a lot like last fall and winter. So that's kind of the time that I associate it with. It is a beautiful fall and winter scent. It's warm, it's a good like winter going out scent, you know? Like you've got a nice warm winter coat on and a scarf. This is perfect for that type of scenario. So I do like that. Unfortunately, you can't get it anymore. And I don't think any of their new ones are comparable to this, unfortunately. But then the third one in the old Skylar packaging is Coral. So this is definitely a fruity scent. Another great one for like spring and summertime. Hints of grapefruit and a touch of apple blossom. Coral is bright and sun-kissed without being too sharp. Yeah, I agree. It's bright without being too like sharp and in your face. You know, like it doesn't it doesn't have that bite to it that a lot of like really fruity scents have. It's just very, it's just a very happy, confident smelling fragrance. I do like this one a lot. To me, this smells like summer of 2020 because <laughs> that's when I was wearing it a lot. So it just reminds me of that time. And I think it's really nice. I don't think any of their new ones are comparable to this. Although, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is gonna be a long video. So then I have three from their current line. Oh, by the way. New packaging versus old packaging. I think they did a really good job with their rebrand. I do like the new packaging a lot better. It, I mean, it just looks more interesting. The old packaging, I mean, it was, there's nothing wrong with it, but it was just very plain. The new packaging, I like that it's got some kind of like asymmetry to it in the, like the way that the glass is formed here. And they do have like a nice little label on the back. The lid has this sort of like faux marble design to it. But I'll escape. I did have the old version of Isle and I ended up passing it on to a friend because I wasn't that in love with it. I feel like the new one is a little bit better somehow, even though it smells very similar. I remember the old one having a little bit of like a plasticky smell to it. And I feel like there's less of that with this new one. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just how I feel about it. This is another one that I would not have picked for myself. And at first, when I first smelled it, I was like, I don't think I like that. But then I kind of forced myself to wear it <laughs> a couple times and I started to like it more and more. Like it really grew on me. So this is one of those that like, I don't know, I, I've just grown to like it more than I did when I first smelled it. But this one says, top notes are bergamot, orange mist, and fresh quince, quince. Middle notes are cardamom, peony caress, and ginger root. And base notes are sandalwood, subtle musk, and golden amber. So I think the reason why I do like this is because of the sandalwood, subtle musk, and golden amber. I think that's honestly doing a lot of the heavy lifting for this one because I don't love those other notes really. This is a very beachy scent. I do like it. I do like it. It has grown on me a lot. It's got like, it's a, it's a kind of salty smell. I don't see salt in the notes here, but I feel like I can like taste the salt in the air when I smell this. So it's funny, they actually do have a scent called salt air. <laughs> so it's funny that I'd say that. But yeah, this one, I feel like it fits the name and like the vibe very well, like the ocean kind of vibe. Okay, next up, this one, <laughs> 
This one, this next one is Pink Canyon. This is a funny one for me because this smells a lot like the perfume that I wore in high school. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this scent at all. I'm sure if you are, you remember it, but it was from Rue 21 and it was their Revert Eco perfume. That was my like signature scent in high school. And this smells so much like that. I'm sure if I had that one, to compare to this one like right here in person, I would be able to notice some differences. But to me, this smells so much like that perfume. And for that reason, it just makes me think of high school times. So it doesn't smell very sophisticated to me. But at the same time, if I didn't have that memory attached to it, I would probably feel differently about it, you know? The notes of this, the top notes are dewy lemon, grapefruit, and sage leaves. Middle notes are magnolia, lily of the valley, and tiare petals. And base notes are sheer amber, pink salt, cedar, and musk. That's a lot. Yeah, I really do smell the cedar quite a bit. And I like that that's in there because I do feel like it kind of balances everything out. It's a little bit bitter, but not in a bad way. Yeah, I would definitely mainly describe this scent as like citrusy and woodsy, which I think is a nice pairing. Like you've got like the tart citrus and then the almost like bitter cedar. It's not bad. It is a pretty scent. If I smelled it on someone else, I'd be like, oh, you smell nice. But... I just think because I have that memory, like it just smells so much like Rue 21 Revert Eco. <laughs> and so for that reason, I just can't 100% get down with this one, but I can appreciate it at the same time. All right, so then we have Skylar Vanilla Sky. And this is my favorite scent of all of the Skylar fragrances that I have tried. This is a very much a gourmand scent. Um, the top notes are Bergamot Zest, that's interesting, I didn't realize that. Sweet orange and cappuccino. Middle notes are pure vanilla, jasmine, grandiflorum, and cinnamon bark. And the base notes are caramelized cedar, sheer amber, and sandalwood. Usually when the base notes are some combination of sandalwood and amber and cedar, I'm probably gonna like it. In the description of this, they say, there is no better feeling than being wrapped in your favorite blanket with a good book in hand. That is exactly like the type of scenario that comes to mind when I smell this. It just smells cozy. It smells like you're wrapped in a blanket. You've got a cup of you know, hot cocoa or like a latte in your hand. There's like a fall candle burning. The leaves are turning They're It's just, yeah, this is, this is a beautiful scent. This actually reminds me a lot of the Chez Rosa 62 from Sol de Janeiro. Not quite the same. I feel like this one has a lot more of that kind of like pistachio type of situation going on. The almondy pistachio. There's a little bit more of a nuttiness, I think, to this one, whereas this one doesn't have any of that. But they're very similar. Like, if you like this one, then I think you'll really like this, and vice versa. I like that there's some, like, floral and even fruity notes to this to kind of balance it out a little bit. Although I don't really pick up on those much. I feel like they're almost just there to sort of balance things out rather than to really be noticeable. Now, here's the big kicker to this one. As particularly this one, Vanilla Sky, I feel like it's just such a weak scent in that it doesn't last. It really doesn't last and it doesn't really have much like scent throw, I guess. Like I will spray this on and then like 20 minutes later I'll ask my boyfriend if he can smell me like he's sitting on the couch next to me and he's like, no, I don't smell you at all. And that's just so disappointing because when I wear a fragrance, I want I want to be able to smell it throughout the day. I want other people to kind of smell it. Like, I don't want it to knock people out, obviously, but I want it to be there, you know, especially for $85. Like I said, I did receive all of these Skylar ones in PR, but if I had bought this with my own money, I think I'd be pretty disappointed because the lasting power is just so, it's so not there. And for $85, I just feel like I expect good staying power. Like I even feel like I get better staying power out of my good chemistry perfumes. And with those, I don't mind having to reapply halfway through the day because they're $25. But this is $85. And so I just, I, I expect more from it. But the scent is so beautiful. I, I just feel like I, I really have to douse myself in this to get it to linger for any length of time. Like you can see, I've only had this for like probably a month at this point, And Obviously I have a lot of perfumes. I've been bouncing between a lot of these, so it's not like I even wear this every day, but I've already made a pretty big dent in this because I just have to spray so much on. And I feel like this one even more so than the other Skylar ones. Like the other Skylar ones I feel like have better staying power. This one, unfortunately it's my favorite scent, but it has just the weakest lasting power. So that is kind of a bummer for me. I just think if you want this type of a scent, just get the $20 
um, Sol de Janeiro body spray because it's very similar and I feel like this one has better lasting power. All right, so finally we have the Seven Virtues. This is a brand I was so excited to try out. They are sold at Sephora, which makes them a pretty like easily accessible brand. I actually purchased like their, their sampler kit that had like seven or eight samples of their scents. And then I posted about them on my Instagram stories and they contacted me and were like, hey, we'd love to send you some of our perfumes. So they actually sent me three of their scents. One, which was the one that was my favorite out of the sampler kit, Rose Amber. And then they also sent me two scents that were not included in that sampler kit, Santal Vanille and Blackberry Lily. They are, again, pricey. Same price as Skylar, $85 for their full-size regular perfumes. And then they also have perfume oils, which do have a roller ball for $69. And then they have like a regular sized roller ball for 30. So here I have in the full size spray bottle, I have Rose Amber. I love this one. This is actually the one out of the sampler kit that I was planning on purchasing myself because it was my favorite. Okay, so I am someone who, I, I love Rose scents, but I also think it's very easy for Rose scents to just smell very cheap or like bathroom potpourri or something. So when I find a good Rose scent, I'm very excited <laughs> and this is one of them. And the reason why this was like the one that I was planning on purchasing out of the whole sampler kit is because I feel like a good, well-balanced, complex, sophisticated rose scent that smells luxurious is much harder to come by than just your standard like vanilla gourmand scent or, you know, a fruity floral scent. like. This is, I think this kind of scent is expensive to make, so for me that would make it worth the $85 like investment. They say the top notes are pink pepper, cassis, neroli, bergamot, and divana. Heart is rose, cinnamon, orris, jasmine, and lavender. And then the base, here you go, amber, sandalwood, vanilla, vetiver, and patchouli. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. I like when rose scents almost have a little bit of like a fruity rose. You know how? Some rose scents smell like dried up, like potpourri rose, and some smell almost like a fruity, fresh rose water or something. That is the kind of rose that this smells like, not like your dried up, old potpourri rose. <laughs> so, mm, and I just think that the amber, the sandalwood, the vanilla, the patchouli balance it out so beautifully. This is not like an everyday scent for me though. This is like I'm not always in the mood for this kind of thing, you know, but when I am, it just smells beautiful. For me, this is another like fall and winter going out to a fancy occasion kind of scent. I mean, I'll totally wear this on like a regular day too, but it's it's really beautiful. So I'm very happy to have this. All right, so then they also sent me a rollerball of their Santal Vanille scent. And this is one of the ones that was not included in their sampler box. So I was really excited to be able to smell this. This is beautiful. <laughs> like, I am very impressed. I wasn't expecting this. This is a very complex, interesting scent. But this one they say is a warm and sweet gourmand, part of the warm and spicy family. And the keynotes are myrrh, sandalwood, and vanilla. This, I feel like there has to be some kind of pepper to this, or maybe like cardamom, because there is a definite, like, almost black pepper kind of scent to this that I love. It's, it's a very woodsy vanilla. I do get the sandalwood, and this is one of those that like, once you've had it on for like several hours and it's kind of like worn off a little bit on your skin, it start, you really do start to smell that sandalwood and it's beautiful. So this is definitely like not your average run of the mill vanilla, which I feel like is another one that makes like the kind of luxury price tag worth it because it's just very unique. Vanilla Woods, which I have a sampler of, this is a more like straight vanilla. Like it's a warm vanilla, there's a little bit of smokiness to it. It is beautiful, but I don't think I would want to spend $85 on this kind of vanilla. But with Santal Vanille, I would definitely, like I do think this is just like nothing I've ever smelled before. And I feel like, mm, it's this makes me think of like a campfire. You know, it's it's a little bit, it's very woodsy, a little smoky, peppery, spicy, mm, really nice.
really nice. And like I said, the rollerball is $30. I I really don't like rollerballs. I much prefer, like even if it's in, in a travel size like this, I would much prefer a travel spray as opposed to a rollerball. But I do feel like even for a rollerball, this one is pretty strong and I do get good lasting power. So um, yeah, I, I really like that scent. That's beautiful. Okay, and then the very last one in my perfume collection, this is the perfume oil of Blackberry Lily by The Seven Virtues. And this is another roller ball. This does come with more product. This is 20 milliliters, whereas the regular roller ball is 11 milliliters, and the full size, just for comparison, is 50 mils. Now, the cool thing about these oil roller balls is that the roller ball is actually a um, what is this, an amethyst? Yeah, it's an amethyst gemstone roller, which I think is a really cool touch. But this, yeah, this one was also not included in their sampler set, so I was glad to be able to smell this with my own nose. Why is it not coming off on the paper, though? All right, I'm just gonna put this on the back of my hand because for some reason this doesn't want to roll on the paper. This is a warm and sweet gourmand. Jammy blackberry and cassis are the top notes. Big heart notes of rose, lily of the valley, geranium, and divana and base notes of organic vetiver, warm amber, and caramel. Yeah, I agree, this is a nice mix of fruity and warm, which I feel like you don't find scents quite like that very often. Again, I don't know if this is one that I'd buy with my own money, and I just think $69 would be kind of a lot to spend on a little rollerball like this, so I would probably just go for the full size if I, if I were gonna get this, but I do think this is a really nice scent. It's like a very like grown-up take on fruity. I feel like of all the brands here, the Seven Virtues is definitely the one I consider the most sophisticated. Those are all my perfumes. So as promised, I am gonna give you guys a top three. I'm gonna say my number three is Rose Amber by the Seven Virtues. This is a scent that's very new to me and it's hard for me to say right now if this is gonna be like a forever favorite, but right now, I love this. We'll see if I get tired of it. Sometimes with scents, I do end up getting tired of them and I feel like this is one that, it's such a specific scent that I'm not sure I'm always gonna be as obsessed with it as I am right now. But right now, I would give that, I would give the number three spot to that one. My number two is gonna have to be the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Crush 62. I know, I mean, I, I feel like this is so popular for a reason. I do love a good gourmand vanilla-y scent and this is really my go-to. I mean, there's a reason why I've used so much of it. I can never go wrong with this one. And then my number one <laughs> is Pinrose Mystical Misfit. There is just something about this scent. I actually don't have any perfume on right now. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on. But there is just something about this scent that like just gets me. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I would be happy. Even though I said this smells Christmassy to me, I feel like this is a great year round scent. I would be happy to smell like this every single day. You know, I feel like it complements any outfit or look. It goes well with any occasion. And it just makes me smile. It really, it puts me in a good mood to smell this. So this is my number one. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my perfume collection. I had a lot of fun making this video. Let me know, are there any fragrances you think I would like that I didn't mention today? I'd love to hear your recommendations below. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to see you again soon. I do upload three or more videos every week, um, mostly about like makeup and beauty, but who knows, maybe I'll start to sprinkle in some more fragrance content as well. But I'd love to see you again soon and hopefully I'll talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye.